Rotator cuff injury is one of the most common reasons for shoulder pain. And patients often present with pain over the front or outside of their shoulder, in addition to variable weakness, especially with overhead activities and reaching. In properly selected patients, surgery is sometimes indicated to reattach the tendon down to bone. This can be done through one of two procedures. One is the convention open surgical technique. The alternative is the technique that we're using today, arthroscopic surgical repair of the rotator cuff. The advantages of arthroscopic repair include smaller incisions, a decreased operative time, less pain, and an accelerated rehabilitation, especially for restoration of motion and decrease in postoperative stiffness. In addition, doing the procedure arthroscopically gives the surgeon the versatility to treat any concomitant pathology of the shoulder at the same time using the same incisions. This uh, gentleman is a 72-year-old patient who fell. He had a normal shoulder. He had no pain, no dysfunction of his shoulder. He fell on an outstretched arm, and after his fall, he was unable to lift his arm up. He uh, was seen in the emergency department and then seen by us three days later. And on the basis of his physical exam, as well as his imaging studies, we determined that he had a supraspinatus tear, one of the four muscles of the rotator cuff. One of the most common tears that we see in the rotator cuff involves the supraspinatus tendon. That's this tendon right here. And what happens is the tendon actually lifts off its footprint or its attachment to bone. Uh, we had, do have a slide of that also showing the tear repaired during, during, uh, using an open technique with the sutures in place. Our plan today is to reattach this tendon down to bone using suture anchors. These are anchors that secure deep into the bone and have sutures attached which are then secured to the tendon to bring it back down to its footprint or bony attachment. If we can go to the slide you can see a picture on our slide of a rotator cuff tear. And uh, the tear that you see uh, is accessed open here through what we call a mini open split of the deltoid muscle. That's the muscle that overlies the rotator cuff. The procedure that we're using today does not request or, or uh, need for uh, detachment of the deltoid or for splitting it. But this is a tendon that we're talking about, the supraspinatus tendon that you can see on the screen. It has sutures in it. It's the most common tendon that we see torn. Other tendons that are commonly torn include the tendon behind the supraspinatus, which is cut out for demonstration in this model, right here where this gap is, and also the tendon in front, the subscapularis tendon. The other tendon that can commonly be torn, and is actually torn in this patient, at least partially, is the biceps tendon. The biceps runs in this groove called the bicipital groove and attaches deep inside the shoulder to the top of the cup or glenoid. In today's case, we're going to be fixing that tendon outside of the shoulder in the bone in this area here, again with suture anchors. Patients most frequently will present with shoulder pain, as you can see on the slide. It's the most common complaint that we see, especially night pain. Patients find it very difficult to sleep at night, especially trying to sleep on that side. They may experience pain with overhead activities or with reaching behind them to put on a coat or reaching for a shirt or a towel. In addition, the majority of the patients will have difficulty and a variable amount of weakness doing overhead or reaching activities. Most of these patients can be diagnosed with a thorough history and physical examination along with using radiographs. In addition, using MRI studies, especially with an arthrogram to enhance the visibility of the shoulder and increase its accuracy, have become commonplace and standard for diagnosing some smaller rotator cuff tears. The majority of the patients that have atraumatic shoulder pain can oftentimes be managed without surgery. That is, using things such as steroid injections and physical therapy and altering the shoulder biomechanics by using the shoulder with the elbow more at the side rather than reaching out, especially with activities that involve pushing, pulling, and lifting. We'll go to our next slide, showing a little bit about the anatomy of the uh, rotator cuff. 
and it's a series of four muscles and tendons underneath a big muscle called the deltoid. And the, uh, the deltoid with an open technique needs to be either split or detached. Just to give you an idea where that is attached, it's, this is the acromion or the shoulder bone. And the deltoid overlies like a curtain and drapes over the rotator cuff. To access the rotator cuff tear, the deltoid would either have to be split or detached from the front of this bone. The Stop. problem with that is postoperatively, that can lead to a catastrophic, catastrophic event called deltoid detachment, which can seriously affect the function of the shoulder, especially long term.